Bummer and all. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your home for learning how to play the guitar, the banjo, or the mandolin. I'm in the middle of a three-week series teaching you how to play what you just heard, Under the Double Eagle. This is an old tune. It's actually written uh, for more of a marching band type of thing. It was made famous by uh, Sousa, who was an American composer. But since, it's made its way into bluegrass circles, and I'm glad it did. If you're watching this on YouTube, or Facebook here in a little while, I'll ask you to go over to the website, banjobenclark.com, where you can join as a member there and view hundreds of videos, just like this one. I put a new one out every week, and not only do I have the videos, but I teach you how to play every note, and then I have another video where I play the whole thing slowly for you. And I have, on this lesson, four different speeds of guitar backing tracks that you can practice along with. Um, the tabs are there as well, so you can go and download the PDF or the TEF file of the tab and you can learn it and you have no excuses then, okay? So let's dive into Under the Double Eagle, key of C. This song is in the key of C. We're gonna play it out of the C position, okay? So no capo. Um, we're just learning the, the part of the song that's in the key of C. Traditionally, uh, originally this song modulates up to the key of F for a little while then comes back to the key of C. But in a lot of bluegrass uh, situations and scenarios, I hear it played uh, just remaining in the key of C, and that's what I'm going to teach you today. Uh, this song's tricky, but a lot of fun to play. It's really, really good for a right hand or your pick hand workout. Okay, we're going to have a lot of cross picking or cross picking type of moves, and we'll talk about that. Um, we're also going to be concentrating on our volume that we play um, in order to accent the melody. So let's just talk about that. There in measure one, we're just going to walk in. I have all of your pick stroke directions there beneath each one of the notes. Okay, so we're gonna walk in three quarter notes. Two, three, four. And then I want you to get into a C position, just our regular C chord. And our melody is going to be on the first and third beat here. Okay, so we have a melody note to start out measure two, and then another melody note we're gonna reach up and grab on the third, third fret, the low E string, that G note. So that's, that's our stripped down melody. Okay, so those other notes that are in here, that uh, D and G string on the second and fourth beats, those are supporting notes. Okay, the melody of this song goes rather slow. It's not like Blackberry Blossom, where there's melody notes coming at you all the time. These are slow melody notes. So we have to throw in a lot of other notes to keep it interesting. Um, so the point of that is that these supporting notes do not need to be as loud as um, our melody notes. So listen, I'm gonna play measure one and two and, and let you hear how I accent the melody notes. Hear that? So I'm playing these notes on the first beat and the third beat a little louder and kind of just coming up and tickling those other two strings. Now when we get to measure three, um, our melody note changes to this D string. We're going to hammer on, so we're going to play the open D string and then hammer to the second fret and roll on through. Same type of thing there. There's our melody note. And then we're going to come back down for two more melody notes. Okay, so so far, measures one through three, our actual melody is. And all the rest of those notes are supporting notes. So um, that motif, that technique, is going to be used all throughout the song. When we get to measure four, uh, same type of thing. Our melody note moves up here to the G string. We're going to hammer onto it and then roll through and then come back down. Okay, so measure four all together. And our melody note, so the hammer and then the open G. Go, notice my index finger has not come up from this first fret in the measure five. Sounds like this. Okay, so we have that same little lick that we've already seen before in measure three. And then we're going to slide with our ring finger from third to fourth fret. And we're getting ready to change chords here. But let me just play for you slowly measures one through five. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, 
So you notice how I'm accenting, making those melody notes louder. And that just takes a little practice to get kind of in that swing. When we get into measure six, we're changing to a G chord, okay, so we can lift our uh, hand up off that C chord position. And we're going to get um, have a, a little backwards roll here. We're going to start off with an open G string and do a backwards roll. And that's our melody notes. So. And I just want you to make sure and pay attention to your pick strokes. It's down, down, up, down, up, down. And when we get to measure seven, we're going to start off there with a dotted quarter note. And that just means it gets a beat and a half of time. Okay, so um, one and two. So measures six and seven together. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And to end that measure seven there, I'm playing two strings at once, right? And we're going to do that quite a bit throughout the song. The main note that we're wanting to hear is that note on the G string. So that gets most of our volume. But our pick goes on through and hits that B string as well. And then measure eight, the melody it just hangs on this E note for a full measure. So we don't want to just play that melody note and then stop. So what I'm going to do is work it into kind of this cross picking type lick. It sounds like that. So we start off with a hammer measure eight. And then that's a quarter note when we get up there to that first fret. So we hold it a little longer. start it back over again. Good, and then measure 11, we've seen all this before. 12 as well. We've seen all this. Until we get to measure 15, we're just going to have a, a, a little partial G lick here in 15 to wrap up this first little phrase. So we just play the open A string, hammer on from first to second, go up to the D string, hammer on first to second, and then when we get to measure 16, we're going to work a little rhythm into this solo. It just sounds like this. Okay. So I'm just playing my regular C chord measure 16. I'm doing a bass, double strum, and then I reach down and grab this third fret down here. Then we lead on into uh, the second phrase. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> 